Now, turning our attention to the Premier League. Simple question to begin with. Ahead of the weekend action, Don, mm. who has surprised you the most? Who has maybe overachieved or just, oh, I wasn't expecting that since the start of the season for you? Three teams, really. Brighton okay. are one of them. Mm -hmm. Aston Villa, for sure, because Unai Emery is building something brilliant there. But I thought at the start of the season, they would remind me of Newcastle a little bit when they got in the Champions League and they might just find it a little bit difficult. Yeah. They haven't. When I am, he's got the players playing great. I think Liverpool, though, I think they're not on a slot. I think, you know, from all the talk in the summer and all the, the emotion last season of Jurgen Klopp moving on and leaving the legacy that he left behind. And then the chat was in the summer while everyone was buying players. Well, Liverpool fans are like, we haven't signed anyone. We haven't signed anyone. Like, how come we're the only club that's not signed anyone? It's all on FSG. And then Arna Slot come out and he was brilliant in an interview. He went, how do I buy players for Liverpool when I've got the players that I've got? How do I buy a better centre-half than Virgil van Dijk? How do I buy a better right-winger than Mo Salah? I've got attacking players. Everyone, yeah, was Zuba Mendy was the talk and screaming out for number six. But what he's done to Ryan Gravenberg is incredible. So coaching from Arna Slot, maybe they don't even need a Zuba Mendy anymore. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But Gravenberg's on fire. So to only lose that game against Forrest and flawless, apart from that in the Premier League, and flawless in the Champions League, my days, what a job What a job he's done. Incredible job. I mean, Jürgen Klopp, I got asked the question a few months ago, if you're building a, a Mount Rushmore of Liverpool managers, who are they? And it was impossible. You know, Joe Fagan, uh, Shankly was obviously in there. Um, obviously, Damn Jürgen niche. Klopp. Yeah, yeah. Kenny. And, you, and you're trying sort of manuf And you just go, it's impossible because they all had unbelievable eras at the football club. But Jürgen Klopp was in there. So that's, that's some legacy that he's left behind. And Arna Slot at the moment is just very calm. He goes about things a different way. He's little, not spiky, but he's a little bit clever with the journalists. And they asked him about the game the other day. And he said, oh, you didn't really dominate the game. And he went, did you watch the game? You're not in the stadium. We dominated Leipzig. <laughs> and what he's doing is just phenomenal. So this is the acid test of the weekend, Arsenal away. But, I mean, weirdly enough, I mean, yes, because Arsenal have got one or two injuries and Liverpool are playing great and top of the league. I think Liverpool go into this game favourites only just. They're finding different ways to win. I mean, away from home, they're, they're tight. They're scoring goals. One thing that I was slightly surprised about LME, when Stevie Nicol and I did ESPN FC Live straight after Liverpool against Chelsea, and he came on, he's like, <sighs> not because he hadn't had his packet of crisps that day. or you got, you got this sigh perfectly, by the way. <laughs> well, it's a Scottish sigh. It's kind of, that's a happy sigh for us. Um, he was like, <sighs> I said, what's wrong? Your team's just won. Aye, but it's not what it was. It's it's different. I said, well, you've got to get used to that. This is the Arnest slot way. You can yeah. find a way to to win by scoring a few goals, or you can you can win against Chelsea by not being at your best. So, what kind of style are we going to get from Liverpool at Arsenal, and what kind of reaction are we going to get from? Stevie Nickel, Ellen. Well, I think the Stevie Nickel one is easy to answer, no matter what happens. It could be a 5 nothing thumping. Stevie Nickel's going to be easy thinking about something. Seven, though, was it? I, I love the legend, Stevie Nickel, but come on. Exactly. Uh, now, listen, I, I want to echo a, a little bit of what Don said to answer this question, because Liverpool, to me, have been the most impressive, and, and they've been surprisingly so, because, like Don said, to do something it's always difficult to come into a major club and take over right it that that objective and that challenge becomes even harder when you're doing it after a legendary manager right arsene wenger um sir alex ferguson and jürgen klopp because of what he has done for liverpool in terms of identity on the field and the relationship he built with the liverpool community and then arnest lock comes in never been in the premier league as a manager and he has done something remarkable. And to me, what you're going to see on Sunday is exactly what you have seen from the very beginning of this season. Mm -hmm. The great thing about Arne Slot is that he hasn't changed Liverpool. He has modified it. And yeah. sometimes what we do as analysts is we think, well, when a new manager comes in, what philosophies are they going to implement? What tactics are they going to try and change, et cetera? But seldom do we talk about the fact that the best managers are the ones who see what they have in front of them, and then they see, how can I make my tactics fit what I have? How can we make a sort of you know, symbiotic relationship where my players are understanding what I'm instilling, and at the mm -hmm. same time, I'm getting what I want from them? 
And that's exactly what Arnest Lott is doing. He has created a team and a strategy that controls game. Possession doesn't mean control. And that was Arnest Lott's point regarding the Leipzig game to the, to the uh, journalist. Possession doesn't mean control. He's controlling games in terms of pace, in terms of rhythm, and they're doing much more with less. So I think mm -hmm. against Arsenal, who equally under Mikel Arteta have the identity of trying to control games in different ways, Liverpool are going to come in there and be calm. Mm -hmm. And they're going to understand when we have the ball, we have to be productive with it. We have to make sure that we push those chains. We have to make sure that we enter the final third the right way. We have to make sure that Trent Alexander-Arnold is protected as a right back and doesn't need to be lost so much going forward when he loses the ball. We have to make sure that Gra Ryan Gravenberg, who is clearly, as Don said, one of the most important players for Liverpool, but he also has support. It's going to be difficult, and we've talked about this in the show. The schedule is about to get so tough for Liverpool, mm. but... I have been so impressed, and it's going to be a real tricky thing, especially because Arsenal is also dealing with injuries and suspensions, and and you know it's a massive game for Arsenal, uh, and we can talk about that. But Liverpool right now know exactly who they are, and I've been very impressed. The schedule is about to get real tough. The challenge is about to get real tough. So we'll see what happens. But so far, my God, very impressed with Arnest Lott on Liverpool. Yeah, just one blemish against Forest at home. Arsenal had that blemish at Bournemouth last week. Also drew at home against Brighton, having had the man sent off. But Don, Manchester City. So I like to do a kind of compare and contrast. So I went mm -hmm. back 12 months because Man City right now aren't playing the way that they were playing at their best. But they're, they're still finding a way most times. They did last yeah. week at Wolves. So this time last year, after eight games, they were on 18 points and they were third. And I know your mind kind of plays tricks on you, but you kind of think, yeah, that Man City team last season with De Bruyne available and Foden available when he was flying, is probably a better team than the one right now when De Bruyne is injured and Foden's not getting too many games right now. Yet this Man City team has 20 points and mm. that team had 18, was in third, and it only got better as the season wore on. So they're still title right favourites for you? 100%. 100%. And you can go back many a year, and Man City traditionally, before last season, were really slow starters. Slow. Yep. Remember one year when they won the league about three or four years ago, I think after about 10 games, they were sitting sort of in 10th, or might even be close to sort of bottom half of the league. Never phased them. They play the way. Um, the one thing I would say is when you try and compare and contrast what Arsenal, Liverpool and City do, Liverpool have got a loss in them. Arsenal have got a loss in them. Mm. City don't lose. City do not lose games. Unbeaten this season, unbeaten in the Champions League, they win games even when it's against them. When you think Wolves are going to get a 1-1 draw, John Stones finds a winner. Even when Arsenal are winning and they find an equaliser through John Stones, they know how to get, and it might just be a draw. But they never lose. You're gonna to have to be some team to beat them, and it puts that that then puts an awful lot of pressure. You imagine if you're playing for any of the top sides. If you're playing for Liverpool, say, and you're playing for Arsenal, you mentioned Villa, you mentioned one or two teams like Chelsea, and you know before you kick a ball in pre-season to win the league, you've got to hit 95 to 96 points to win the league. That's what City do on average. Mm -hmm. It's frightening. It's unbelievable that the, the bar they've set over the years is saying to every other team, you go and dare lose three or four games in the Premier League and you are done. I mean, the pressure's on Arsenal this weekend because everyone's talking. If Liverpool go there and beat Arsenal, Liverpool will be seven points clear. And Man City, every chance they're going to beat Southampton, will be six points clear. All of a sudden, then you worry for Arsenal going, your title race is gone. Your yeah. title race is nearly history inside 11 games. Because as I said, City don't lose. So to give them that advantage, I mean, it puts City in the box seat this weekend because they've got the popcorn game where you would have thought they're going to win and the chances are they're going to win and they will win. And you they can then sit. triple captain Erling Haaland if you're playing. And then you can sit back and go, yeah. And then you can go back and then all the players and the manager can sit back and watch the Arsenal game thinking, mm. oh, the draw would be nice here. Just going back to something you said about the poor start to the season yet still winning the title. It was 21-22 when they got 93 points and Liverpool got 92. They were 19th after game one. They were third after eight games, but they went from 19th to 12th to 9th to 7th to 6th for three weeks. It was a really nice. poor start to the season. It's it's a case of if the other teams don't start well and get the points on the board, they're, they're a horrible team 
as a front runner, Manchester City to try and catch LME, aren't they? They just they rarely slip up. One of the things that I repeat myself over and over again that if you want to beat Manchester City, you have to be perfect or almost perfect. And I more lean towards perfection because of everything that you guys have been talking about. Um, this is a team that knows how to win, knows how to get things done, because let's be honest, you know, the defensive weaknesses, we have seen them. Uh, they're a little vulnerable against the counter right now, but it doesn't matter for Manchester City. They figure it out. And this is always the conversation in the title race. When an Arsenal or a Liverpool or anybody around the area trying to fight for this title plays a big one, and we have this conversation like, is this a title decider? I always you know, lean to say no. The title deciders are what the other teams do against other teams and when they drop points. Arsenal dropping points against Bournemouth, against Brighton, right? Uh, Liverpool dropping points against Forest. What, what are they going to do in this big schedule, right? Manchester City just get it done. They just get it done. Now, I will say that Rodri's absence to me is significant and it will remain significant. And it is a very important thing to remember. They do have the players to cover it. But Rodri, who is the best player in his position, his absence is, is big. But this is Manchester City. This is a team that knows how to win. I will also say that there is a verdict coming in the spring of 2025 on alleged charges. And we don't know what's going to happen there. So I want to see how the outcome goes there. So there are other things outside of the football ground. That Jose will... standing by, isn't he? <laughs> Jose standing by for the Absolutely. medal. Absolutely. You just don't know. You don't know, right? You know, LME, but, yeah. LME, but if we're said... talking about football only and one teams do, Manchester City is the Goliath to beat. Manchester LME, City is the Godzilla to beat. You said a great word there. You said a great word. You said perfection. That's what you have to be. If you go back to that crazy season when I think 100 points, 99 points, and Liverpool were nearly invincible that season. Mm. They didn't lose a single game apart from the game they lost against Man City, the John Stones clearing off the line. Otherwise, Liverpool would have been invincible and won the league. So even if you get close to 100 points, you dare not lose against Man City. Yeah, there you go. So do we have three of the top four come the end of the season? This is the, the last set of fixtures in October. November's next, so we're, we're still in the season's infancy. We're going into game week nine. But in whichever order, it, it, is it pretty much Liverpool, City and Arsenal? Not as locks for the top three, but does it really only leave us, Don, with, with yeah. one spot available for the top four? Yes. Um, as we sit here today, um, I've got Man City winning it. I've got Liverpool okay. second. I've got Arsenal third. And I've got a team that I thought would be nowhere near it at the start of the season, having watched them in pre-season, having been over with you guys in the summer and watched Chelsea's pre-season where they were, mm. they were terrible. Most of their players in pre-season played themselves out of the team. They were that bad. Mm. But my word, they've had a reaction. So my favourite as we sit here today to get that fourth spot is Chelsea. Okay. LME, is it the three we mentioned? Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, plus one other. Or are you taking one of the three that we've mentioned out and putting in two more? Well, see, me and Don are like peas and carrots until the very end. I also have Man City. I also have Liverpool and I have Arsenal in that order. But I don't have Chelsea, but I have been uh, impressed with them. But the continuous underrated judgment of Unai Emery and Aston Villa, I still have Villa as fourth. Yes, you can say I'm biased. I'm an Aston Villa fan. But the proof is in the pudding, right? We are seeing this. They're still undefeated away from home. They continue to deliver at home. Things will get tough. And yes, the Champions League, which, by the way, they have three wins. They're leading the league face table as well. This is a very good squad. And every single player continues to deliver. There will be obstacles in the way. And I have been impressed with Chelsea. But no, I have it. Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal and Aston Villa getting that fourth spot. Your Honour, can so I make one more point? Make one more point, Your Honour. four teams. You can't do what I know. we did earlier with the classical. But just just, <laughs> yes, just, just to counteract LME's point there, and he makes a great point about Villa. Chelsea last night, all of their first-team players all sat on the bench. Cole Palmer not even registered for the conference. Nkunku on the bench. João Felix on the bench. I mean, incredibly, incredibly strong. So they are picking, at the moment, one team to try and win the conference and another completely different side to try and succeed in the Premier League. So that's pretty much unheard of. 
I'm just yeah. still waiting for them to play a, a, and win against a legitimate top five, top six team. They lost against Man City in the opener. Good game. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they lost to Liverpool. Good game again. And I'm, I'm I, and MD, I've been on this show saying Chelsea are so good. Very impressed. But I'm just waiting to see how this continues because it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And how they do against bigger opposition. But granted, because they have a completely new squad or different squad for the Conference League, Maresca has a great disposal for him to continue. But I want to see what they do against the big boys. But, yeah, it's going to be tough. It's Again, it's one of the tightest title races and Champions League spot races uh, we have ever seen. Two things about Chelsea. One, I think, still think we need to sign a world-class goalkeeper if available. And two, that squad is for the Conference League group stages. They're obviously resting players for the knockout stage and then when they face Heart of Midlothian in the Conference <laughs> League final with Hearts having won their opening two games and flying right now. Come on, Hearts! Getting... Hey, that's what it's all about. That's I'm cheering be, you on! End of May. In, hey, uh, their method, their Paul. method, Heart, is just keep sacking your manager for European <laughs> oh, football because they've had two me. They've, they've had excuse two that are unbeaten. Me. Hold on. Our method is analytics now. Tony Bloom, the Brighton owner, the is Tony now Bloom involved. Is there. Oh, forget He's that. There. Liam Fox had one game oh my God. in European football. Had one this weekend, but this is not what it's about. It's not what it's about. We started with Mug Club. We had Don Hutchinson's old teletext of the score. <laughs> Aston Villa. Very good. Oh, and also... Yes. Oh, here we go. That means <laughs> nothing to the uh, to the Brits, to most of the Brits. I know, I know. As a guy who hosted a baseball show for three years there. They were like, well, um, I've got one too. <laughs> there you go. There you oh, go. Have some of that, legend. Mr. Paul Mariner. Legend. Hey, Hope just well. be lucky I don't have my 3-1 Peru, Scotland. Uh, right, time. <laughs> That's it for ESPN FC Live. We'll see you again. We'll do it this weekend. Uh, Arsenal, Liverpool. It's a bad, bad, it's a bad line. Nope. Go Bye for now. Break it up. Break it up. Bye.